Patricia Cornwell is back with another in her award-winning and best-selling series about medical examiner Dr. K. Scarpetta. Unnatural Death is the 27th novel in the series. Stay tuned. Patricia Cornwell and I will talk about this latest novel and the inspirations behind it. This is Some Books Considered, and I'm Dan Skinner. I requested and was provided with a copy of the book, but this video is not sponsored. Patricia Cornwell first introduced readers to Dr. K. Scarpetta in her novel Postmortem in 1990. 33 years later, Dr. Scarpetta is still going strong and still solving mysteries. Patricia, welcome to the program. Well, Dan, thank you. It's great to be with you today. Now, for anyone who may not be familiar with your character, Kay Scarpetta, tell us about her. Well, Scarpetta is a forensic pathologist, uh, a medical examiner, in other words, and she also has a law degree, and she's the, the, the chief medical examiner of Virginia. Um, in this new book, we find her in the northern part of Virginia, where her headquarters is up there right outside of Washington. And her job, as, as most people probably know, is when somebody dies suspiciously or unexpectedly or violently, then the medical examiner is going to investigate that death. And so she works closely with the police dealing with, you know, what killed somebody? What evidence can you collect? And, and uh, you know, what else is she going to do to help solve the case and save the day, so to speak. So that's what, and she's, um, you know, this is the 27th book that features her, but I will also tell you, you don't have to have read any of them to read Unnatural Death, but you get to look at crime from her point of view, which is a very different one. Now, when you wrote your very first novel, you were working in the medical examiner's office in Richmond, Virginia. So I guess you were following that, uh, you know, writer's adage about writing what you know. Well, except I did it the other way around. I didn't know anything. So, you know, I started out as a journalist and I became a police reporter for the Charlotte Observer. And then I did a biography and I thought, okay, I want to write books now about crime. That's what I was interested in. So I actually started doing research in the medical examiner's office in Richmond, Virginia, where my, my then husband and I had moved. And I had no idea how interested I was going to get in it get in, uh, in, you know, with in forensic medicine and the forensic labs upstairs. I mean, this was 1984 and nobody had heard anything much about all this back in the day. So it was an undiscovered territory. What I didn't realize is how long it would take me to write a book that was worth reading. I wrote three books before I wrote Postmortem and even Postmortem uh, the first Scarpetta novel that got published, it was rejected by about eight publishing houses before Scribner's took it on. But by then, I had been working in the morgue for the better part of six years. And so I did. I, it, I didn't write about what I know. I began to know what I wrote about. I had to learn it. So I, And I still do that. I still am always learning something new so I can walk in the shoes of these very smart characters. And I want to talk to you more about that in just a moment. But first of all, tell us about the plot of this latest novel. Where are you taking Kay Scarpetta this time? Well, I'm taking you on a real wild adventure because it opens with her on her way out of the morgue. Um, and there's and her niece, Lucy, who's a Secret Service agent and a helicopter pilot, has landed this very high-tech, military, ominous uh, a helicopter out in the parking lot and Scarpetta's headed off to an uninhabited forest that's, you know, in the western part of the state. And there's two campers who have been brutally killed out by their campsite out in the middle of nowhere. This is very far away from civilization in a part of the world where you don't expect people to be because it's very dangerous. Um, it's an area where gold mining went on in the very early 1800s. And when the Civil War started, uh, all the mines shut down, and this is true in this part of Virginia, by the way. And so the the land is riddled with old mine shafts, and it's polluted with chemicals from mining. And so Scarpetta's first thought is, what on earth are these two people doing out there? Well, it turns out they're about to get arrested by law enforcement. They're guilt. They're, they're suspected of huge cyber fraud. They're cyber criminals <clears throat> involved with Russia, as a matter of fact. And that's why they're out there camping, because they're up to no good. But what killed them and what really causes things to go haywire is that 
near the opening of a mine shaft inside the entrance of this old gold mine, very close to where one of the bodies is found, is this enormous footprint. So it's about 18 inches long. And of course, it looks like the ones you've seen that are left by Bigfoot. And so what is Scarpetta supposed to make of this? And did we did a wild animal do this to these people? And so, of course, you're going to find out in short order there's something else going on here that's got nothing to do with Bigfoot. And don't accuse him of anything bad because he's not guilty. But he was he's part of the mix. And so all of this is, is quite uh, intriguing and actually quite harrowing because her her recovery of these bodies in this, this very verboten place is, is pretty scary. So what made you think about putting Bigfoot into this story? Well, you know, I, I just happened to come across a photograph of a Bigfoot footprint that was picked up by a surveillance camera in a park in Texas. And for what I, I just was looking at it and I thought, you know, I've been hearing about this forever. And there seem to be more alleged sightings of this mythical creature. So what is this all about? And I started looking into it and I had no idea that Bigfoot actually did exist once. The, the actual scientific name of it is Gigantopithecus. And it was a giant ape that, it, that existed in China. Uh, long ago, they found fossils in caves there, which is how we know about this creature. The reason it's, it's such a, um, you know, it's such a mystery in, around, in the United States or in North America is that there's, nobody has any real reason to understand why it might exist here. It, it's thought to have gone extinct during the Ice Age, and it never existed in North America that we know of. But during the Ice Age, it could have crossed over uh, the land bridge between what's now Siberia and Alaska, like early humans did. It's only 300 miles long. And, and you know, it was, it was uncovered because of the ice lowering the sea levels during the Ice Age. So there's reasons it could exist. And I just started looking into it, and I thought, well, Okay, maybe it exists, maybe it doesn't, but more to the point, what would she do if she found a footprint? How are you going to handle that? How would the Secret Service handle it? How would Marino handle it? And so that becomes an interesting subplot in and of itself. A moment ago, you mentioned the uh, niece Lucy, who works with the Secret Service. Tell us a little bit about how that character came about. Well, Lucy goes all the way back to the postmortem days when uh, my very first Scarpetta novel that got published. And at that time, she was the brand new chief medical examiner of Virginia, living in Richmond then. And she had a, her niece, Lucy, was 10 years old at that time. And she was, she was spending the summer basically with her Aunt Kay uh, when those serial murders broke out. Well, that was a very long time ago. And now, of course, Lucy is an adult. Um, you know, I don't really tell people's age, but she's going to be in the 40-ish range and um, hard to believe. And she's a Secret Service agent, a cyber investigator, and her specialty, of course, is computers, anything in the invisible world, anything with electromagnetic energy, um, you know, cyber crimes, um, and of course, anything else. She's just, uh, and she's a, a, a gifted helicopter pilot, just really incredible. And she can take that helicopter into places that the rest of us would not dream of. And so that that is fun too, is to be in the helicopter. And since I'm a helicopter pilot, um, I was able to at least write those scenes. I couldn't do what, what, what Lucy does, but, but I can take you on a ride into the woods and landing on a dry creek bed, and I think you'll have a lot of fun with that. Let's talk a little bit more about Kay. You've written about her for decades now. How has she evolved over the years? Well, you know, Scarpetta evolves the same way the rest of us do. As time marches on and the way politics change, and our, our social scene changes and pol our, our technologies dramatically changing. I mean, when I first started writing about Scarpetta, there, there was no, quote, internet. There was no, there were not, nobody much was, there were no cell phones. I mean, or the kind that were, you know, looked like something um, that you, you'd wear on, a, on your belt because it was so big. But we did not have these technologies. Now she has to adapt to that to the new world the same way all of us do. And that's going to change how she feels, how she thinks. It changes the types of crimes that she works, and it changes her own experiences. She has protesters around her building, um, for example, and, 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 and during some types of cases that she has, because people are much more vocal 
and there's a lot more discord than there used to be. And this is all new for her. Now, you've been writing about Kay for, as I mentioned, decades now. What is it about this character that holds your interest? And I guess at the same time, what do you think this character continues to hold the interest of your readers? Well, I think Scarpetta is a flexible person with a seeking mind. And so this is a character that I can always put in a new situation. Um, and, And by the way, death is the common denominator. I don't care who or what you are. Unfortunately, all of us are going to die. And so because of that, if you start with that, you can have any type of character you want. You can have any type of case you want. I mean, I can, I mean, eventually, well, for example, and two books ago in the, in the Scarpetta novel Autopsy, she works two deaths in outer space. Now she doesn't go up there, but she does it remotely and, and all in a totally realistic way. I show you what would happen if somebody dies up, up there on, on, a, on an orbiting laboratory, for example. And so she gets to do that because she can. She simply has to take science as she knows it and apply it to a very different environment. In that case, weightlessness, where blood and fluids work, act very differently without gravity. So that there's your imagination really is your only limiting factor when you deal with a character like her. And fortunately, she's a lot smarter than me, so I can always learn something new and tell a new story. Now, in any book, you have the main characters, but you also have other characters that you create. And one of the questions I like to ask authors of fiction is this. If you could spend a day in real life with one of the characters from this novel, who would it be and why? I would spend a day with Scarpetta. I know that sounds weird because you think I spend every day with her, but not really. I mean, I don't say, assuming she is a real person or exists in a dimension where I could pass through and sit out in her garden and have a conversation with her, I would love to do that. She'd be my top choice because I would ask her a lot of questions about how she really feels because I don't assume I always know. So I would spend my day with her. Mm -hmm. So what's next for you? Well, I like to explore life's mysteries. And just as I explored Bigfoot, the other thing that's very pervasive these days is all this talk and and everything about UFOs or UAPs, as they're called. And so this whole notion of life beyond our planet, uh, is there there life beyond our planet? And what does that mean? Um, And so I've been looking into a lot of that with some of my NASA friends and other people. And I'm going to have Scarpetta explore something Again, a very mysterious case that looks like one thing, but probably is going to end up being something else. Well, this current novel is Unnatural Death by Patricia Cornwell. Patricia, thank you very much for talking with me today. Dan, thank you very much, and I look forward to uh, to the next time. Thank you. If you'd like to purchase a copy of Unnatural Death by Patricia Cornwell, I've placed a link for you in the description below. And if you'd like to see more videos about books and their authors on a wide variety of topics, be sure to like, subscribe, and click on the bell to be notified about future programs. I'm Dan Skinner. Thank you for watching this edition of Some Books Considered.